angel. Angel, let's watch Bishop Marie Emmanuel, okay? It's about intercession, okay? The Holy Trinity, okay? Okay, let's watch it. Okay. Keep quiet, okay? Keep quiet. Angel. Okay. The Gospel of John is the depth of theology. Every time we read in the Gospel of John, we need to stop at every dot, every letter, every word, because there is so much depth of theology, it is beyond our comprehension. It is only by the power of the Holy Spirit, through the love of God the Father, and the sacrificial Lamb of God Jesus Christ, that we are enlightened to enter and understand the treasures that are hidden in these beautiful, deep, deep, profound biblical teachings in the Gospel of John. Um, chapter 17, verses 20 to 26. If we were given it a title, we will say it is the intercessory prayer of Christ intercessory prayer of Christ as a title for these seven verses. The Lord Jesus prayed four kind of prayers while he was on earth. He prayed four kind of prayers. Number one, it is the prayer of thanksgiving. We find that in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 11 verse 25. The Lord says, and that time Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to the babes. I thank you, Father, for you have hidden all these things from the wise and the prudent and have revealed them to the babes. The thanksgiving prayer. Number two, the Lord Jesus prayed the prayer of glory. That is in the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 40 to 43. In verse 40, the Lord Jesus says to Miriam and Martha, the sisters of Lazarus, whom the Lord raised from the dead after four days. He says, if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. If you would believe, you would see the glory of God. And then verses 41 to 42, says, Father, I thank you that you have heard me and I know that you always hear me. And then he goes to the tomb and says to Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus being dead for four days, rotted in the, in the grave, he wakes up and walks out of the tomb absolutely without a scratch, without a, scratch, without a blemish. The Lord Jesus also prayed the Lord's Prayer, which is the most common one Christians worldwide pray, which is the Our Father. And the Lord said, when the disciples approached the Lord Jesus, they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. He said, every time you pray, you say, Our Father who art in heaven. You find that in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 9, and the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11 and verse 3. And the fourth prayer or the fourth kind of prayer the Lord prayed is what the Holy Bible calls it the propitiation intercessory prayer. Propitiation, another one, another word for it, atonement. Atonement. Meaning this kind of prayer for the forgiveness of sins of mankind. Propitiation of in intercessory prayer. It is um, the prayer which the Lord Jesus has prayed. And this propitiation prayer or intercessory prayer or the atonement kind of prayer where the Lord is asking the Father to have mercy and forgive us our sins. This is the topic of this evening. The Gospel of John chapter 17 is all about Jesus interceding for the remission of our sins. There is another kind of a prayer which is 
a supplication intercessory prayer and that only applies to saints. Saints, when they pray for us, they intercede in supplication. They beg the Lord Jesus Christ to have mercy on us. So this kind of a prayer, it is only a supplication intercessory prayer where saints are praying to the Lord for our salvation. And this is very biblical and absolutely uh, pivotal in the Christian faith, the intercession of saints. Now, so the Lord Jesus prayed four kind of prayers. One, thanksgiving prayer, Matthew 11, 25. The prayer of glory, John 11, 40 to 43. The Lord's prayer, Matthew 6, 9, Luke 11, 3. And the propitiation intercessory prayer, which is in the Gospel of John, chapter 17. There are three types of intercessions. Now, actually, this evening's topic, I'd just like to give you a bit of a taste of what the Gospel of John is all about. Okay? So it's not a contemplative kind of an approach uh, to biblical teachings, but it's more biblical teachings to the, to the heart of it. So that's why um, maybe a little bit, I don't know, could be boring to some of us. I don't know. But it's very interesting. We need to focus. There are three types of intercessions. One, which is the propitiation intercessory prayer or atonement where the Lord Jesus does that alone. The only way, the only one I should say, when he prays for the remission of sins is Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ only. There is no other one that prays for the remission of sins except the Lord Jesus. No saint can do that, and including the mother of all saints, Mother Mary. None of them can ask the Father for the forgiveness of sins. This is only Jesus. He stands alone in this particular intercessory prayer of propitiation or atonement. Now there is another type of intercession which is the intercession of the Holy Spirit. The intercession of the Holy Spirit, we find that in the epistle of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 8, verse 26. It says, The Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The, Holy, the Spirit Himself, meaning the Holy Spirit, is interceding for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. What is the Holy Spirit interceding for us? What kind of an intercession? You wake up and you hear a voice inside of you saying, you must go to church. You wake up and you hear a voice saying, you must get up and pray. You wake up and there is a voice inside of you says you must be close to Jesus Christ. You wake up and the Holy Spirit says, go and do a charitable deed. Help someone hungry, help someone naked, you know, feed someone. Do something which makes the Lord happy. These are the works of the Holy Spirit. No one else. What we call these, the visitations of graces. The visitations of graces is the, is the work of the Holy Spirit only. It is the Holy Spirit comes and touches you so delicately. It awakens the heart, awakens the soul, awakens the core of your being, which has been asleep for so long. When you get this kind of a touch or this kind of an awakening, never ever delay it. Get up and go full steam ahead. And that voice always comes from within, not from without. Because the Holy Spirit is living in you through the Holy Baptism. 
No. When the Lord is interceding, He is talking to the Father about us. When the Lord Jesus in, is interceding, He is talking to the Father about us. When the Holy Spirit is interceding, He is talking in us to the Father. When the Lord Jesus is interceding, He is talking to the Father about us. Father, protect them. Father, preserve them. Father, you know, sanctify them. He is talking to the Father about us. When the Holy Spirit is interceding for us, He is talking inside of us to the Father. Why? Because there is no human being that can talk to God the Father unless it is through the Holy Spirit. Since God is Spirit, and since no one has seen God or known God, how are you going to be able to talk to this God that you do not know? The only one who can reveal God to us is God. No one else. Prophets cannot. Prophets cannot reveal God to us. Why? Because simply putting it, God is infinite. Prophets are finite beings. God is the only infinite being, meaning He has no beginning and no end. The only one who can explain this infinite God is God Himself. And God is Spirit. Therefore, the Holy Spirit is talking in us to the Father. The Holy Spirit teaches us how to talk to the Father. When you stand and say, Father, I love you, the Holy Spirit is talking through you. If it wasn't the Holy Spirit, you wouldn't have been able to say, Father. He can't. You ask the world that God is your daddy. They'll say, that's a blasphemy. There is no such thing. What do you mean God is your father? That's nonsense. But Christians, they call God father so easily. We're still human beings just like everyone else. But how can we call God Father so easily? And how come other people who are like us cannot invoke the word Father? See, they don't have the Holy Spirit in them. So remember, next time when you talk to the Lord so comfortably and so easily, remember, it's the Holy Spirit talking through you. Without Him, we can't say nothing. That was a nice sound. Actually, I didn't plan it, just came naturally. Um, when the Lord Jesus is interceding, He is talking to the Father about us. When the Holy Spirit is interceding, He is talking in us to the Father. The Lord Jesus, therefore, the Lord Jesus, when He intercedes, he is bringing the Father close to us. When the Holy Spirit is interceding, He is bringing us close to the Father. See how it works? When the Lord Jesus is interceding, He is bringing the Father close to us. But when the Holy Spirit is interceding, He is bringing us close to the Father. Now why? Because God is love. And in love, it is always a two-way street. There is no way for the true divine love to have only one way. One way is what we call egocentric, selfish. But when there is true genuine love, it is caring and sharing. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. I call you, you call me. It is a two-way street. When somebody loves somebody, it can't be just coming from one side. It's got to come from both sides. Therefore, the Lord brings the Father to us, the Holy Spirit brings us to the Father. The Father is all love, and love is a two-way street. Now, intercession of saints, it is simply a prayer of supplication, a prayer of begging. The saint is begging God to have mercy on me. That is called the intercessory or a supplication intercessory prayer. 
So when you go to any of the saints, and there are like the stars of the, of the heaven, um, some of us have certain or a particular saying that is very close to our heart. We may have one, two, three or more saints, but always there is one that is the closest ever. It's like I have this special relationship with this particular saint, and it's very, very healthy to have this kind of a relationship where you build this close relationship with the saint, where you talk to that saint um, a, a lot and asking that saint to intercede for you to the one who forgives, saves, and redeems you, and that is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So the intercession of saints is nothing but a supplication, kind of a prayer to the Lord Jesus to have mercy on me, I the sinner. We find that in the epistle of St. Paul to his disciple Timothy, which is Timothy 1, chapter 2, verse 1. And that's where some people misunderstand the concept here. St. Paul, in his epistle to his disciple Timothy, Timothy 1, chapter 2, in verse 1, St. Paul says, Brethren, I beseech you to intercede for one another. And then in verse 5, he says, but we have only one mediator between God and man, and that is the man, Christ Jesus. So, some people say, you see, the only one who is between God and man is Christ Jesus. Why do we need to go to someone else? We are confusing the two words here very clearly. Intercession is one thing, and mediation is totally a different thing. Definitely, we have only one mediator between God and man, and that is the man, Christ Jesus. Because the mediator, or the act, or the job of the mediator, is to reconcile two parties that are now separate from one another. At one stage they were together, something went wrong, and now they are enemies. So the mediator comes, to reconcile these two parties and reunite them once again. The only one who can reunite God back to us and us to God is Jesus Christ. That's definitely the only way. That's called mediation. But intercession, St. Paul says it in verse 1, Timothy 1, chapter 2, verse 1, I beg you, brethren, to intercede for one another. These are the prayers of the saints. My beloved, when I'm asking someone on earth to pray for me, yet I really beg people to pray for me, especially when I'm having it tough. But I'm forgetting one thing, those people that I'm asking and begging them to pray to God for me, they are as sinners as me. And the wage of sin is death. So I'm going and asking a dead person to pray for another dead person like me. If I'm asking someone on earth to intercede for me, how much more that is, is it appropriate to ask someone in paradise to intercede for me? Who is the living one in paradise? If I'm asking a dead person living in sin to intercede for me, why should I ask someone who is sinless now living in paradise? Who is the living? The one in paradise or the one on earth? I just wonder. Those on earth are all dead because we make mistakes. But those in paradise cannot sin anymore. They don't have the body to trap them again. Finito. They've gone to a realm where there is no sin. Since there is no sin, therefore they are the ones who are truly living. Intercession of saints is very important in our Christian faith and spiritual life. And as the Holy Bible teaches us, when two agree on a thing, it shall be given unto them. So when the saint prays and I pray, we agree on one thing, it shall be given by Christ our Savior. Very important. Now, our topic 
that was just an intro. <laughs> Our topic is the the propitiation intercessory prayer, the uh, the prayer of atonement that is relevant to Jesus Christ alone. The Lord Jesus Christ, all glory to His holy name, had three requests in this propitiation intercessory prayer. Three requests. Number one, this is all in the Gospel of John that we read to you. Chapter 17, verses 20 to 26. Um, or in the Gospel of John, chapter 17, he had three requests of atonement intercessory prayer. One, he prayed for himself. It is in, in John 17, 1 to 5. What is he asking the Father? From verses 1 to 5 in John 17. Glorify me. He's asking the Father to glorify him. Why? I'll come back to that. Number two, he prayed for his 12 disciples from verses 6 to 19. And number three, he prayed for the church, which is from verses 20 to 26, the end of the chapter. So verses 1 to 5 of chapter 17, the Lord is praying for himself. Father, glorify me. Verses 6 to 19, he is praying for his apostles, 12 disciples. Number 3, he is praying for the church, verses 20 to 26. Verses 1 to 5, he is asking the Father to glorify him. The reason for that, because when the Lord Jesus came to this realm, to this world, he emptied himself of all the glory that he has with his Father from the very beginning. When he became man like us, in this world, he did not just become a normal human being at a normal level of any human being, he became a slave. As a human being, he became a slave. There are two ranks in the human race the highest and the lowest. The highest rank in the human race is to be a master. The lowest rank in the human race is to be a slave. The Lord Jesus, when he came to do the will of his heavenly Father, he not only became a human being like us, but he went further down and, and humbled himself lowered himself and became a slave as a human being. He took upon himself the lowest rank ever in humanity, slave. So what is he saying the Lord? He's saying, Daddy, you wanted me to come to save Adam and his descendants. And for, in order for Adam and his descendants to be saved and brought back once again to you, Father, I had to lower myself, degrade myself, and accept upon me a, a, a slavery rank. But Father, remember the glory that I had with you from the very beginning. I want it back. I lowered myself for you but you glorify me, Father. We see this vividly clear on Good Friday and Sunday resurrection. On Good Friday, Jesus is nothing but a slave. He's kicked, he's punched, he's swallowed, he's spat in, uh, onto, he is dragged in the streets, he is whipped, and his body is shredded to pieces. He is nail, nailed on the cross, fully naked. Imagine someone in his youth age, at the age of 33, at his peak of youthhood, being raised on the cross fully naked before public. How humiliating is this for a young man? Jesus accepted all kind of degradation, humiliation, for his father's will to be done. He said, Daddy, on Good Friday I became a slave of all slaves. But Daddy, glorify me please. When I am risen from the dead, my glory is going to be given to me from my heavenly Daddy. 
and was he glorified on Sunday resurrection? My goodness. From all walks of life, worship Jesus Christ. From all nations, tongues, follow the Lord Jesus. Black and white, Caucasians, all nationalities follow the Lord Jesus. What a glorious resurrection it is. But you know what? The Lord Jesus went even further than a slave and humbled himself even lower than a slave. And we find that in the Psalm, in Psalm 22 verse 6, where the Lord through King David is talking. He is saying, I am no man but a worm, a little termite. I am a worm. I'm no man but worm. Why is he saying that? Because when you step on a worm and crush it, that worm is alive. It feels the pain. You just crushed this worm, screamed on top of its voice. Did you hear the worm crying? Did you hear the worm screaming? No, but the worm cried and screamed. You didn't hear its voice. Jesus was squashed on the cross. He screamed from pain on top of his voice. He screamed to his heavenly daddy. Heaven was silent, did not reply to him. He said, I became like that worm. I cried out to you and you did not hear me. But our fathers in the wilderness of Sinai, when they cried out to you, you went to their rescue, but your son hanged on the cross is crying like a worm. No one is hearing my voice. Wow. He did all this just to save us and bring us to the truth, to the way and the life eternal. Isn't he worthy of our love? respect, glory, and worship. I'm sure he is. The Lord Jesus interceded in a propitiational way for his disciples, verses 6 to 19 of John chapter 17. He interceded to the Father for his disciples for two things. He said, Father, one, protect them, two, sanctify them protect them father sanctify them father the 12 apostles why these two things the Lord asked protect them because my father my disciples they are going to be the gospel writers they are going to document everything I said and did I want you to protect them from any human thoughts to enter while they are writing my gospel and documenting everything I've done and said because I want my word to be protected and preserved from any human uh, interferences. Protect their intellectual capacity as the word is being inspired to them. Protect that human side so that it does not interfere with my word. I want my word to reach them and the world perfect the way I said it, the way I've done it. Protect them from human thoughts. And number two, sanctify them. Men and women. <laughs> sanctify them. These 12 apostles they were people like me and you. No, Simon was a fisherman. Me go fish a mullet. Me go and fish it for sardine and salmon and the likes. They were fishermen, normal, ordinary people. They knew their, their normal daily routine. He gets up early in the morning, washes his face, and gets very quickly out of the house before the wife nags on him and tell him all these kind of things. He would go out in the early in the morning. 